I'm normally seen around Emmanuel as Development Director, along with my interest in the library, archives and museum. But I'm also a geographer, and I thought I'd tell you a bit about my research interests. I find geography fascinating. I love the way it combines the study of our physical and natural environments with the study of people's past and present to explain the world we live in. I'm especially interested in the history of cartography, maps, and studied for my PhD under our fellow Alan Baker, looking at estate maps of Cambridgeshire drawn between the 16th and the 19th centuries. Since then, I've extended my interests to cover other large-scale local maps of Great Britain and Ireland and the land surveyors who made them. Estate maps were normally drawn to show an individual landowner's property. They could be used for practical purposes, to show land when it was acquired, inherited or let, to show boundaries, to settle disputes with neighbouring owners, or to help with land management. Many were also drawn for display, to display the status of the owner. This means that many are beautiful, drawn on parchment, and highly decorative. For example, here is a map of freighting in Essex, drawn for Gonville and Keys College in 1731. It's a typical estate map. It just shows the owner's land. It has a decorative title cartouche, a copus rose and scale bar, the owner's coat of arms, is drawn on parchment and uses colour to show land use, with arable outlined in brown, pasture outlined in green and depictions of trees. At the bottom left of this image you can see a vignette of the farmhouse, so the maps can show a wealth of local information. I'm particularly interested in the people behind the maps, who the landowners were, why they commissioned maps and how they used them, and who were the surveyors, how did they make their maps and learn to do so, and what else did they do, if anything, to earn a living. All types of landowner commissioned maps. In the 16th and 17th centuries, many were members of the nobility. There's a wealth of maps drawn for the Dukes of Bedford, for instance. Later, smaller landowners had maps drawn, by the early 19th century, some of these were simple sketch maps. Not all of the owners were individuals, and I spent some time thinking about the Oxbridge Colleges as landowners and seeing if and how they used maps. Before I returned to Emmanuel, I was fellow librarian at Merton College in Oxford, and they have a very fine collection of maps of their estates dating back to the late 16th century. Merton is one of half a dozen or so colleges in Oxford that commissioned maps at that time. It took longer for map making to become common in Cambridge, with most maps dating from the mid 18th century and later. One Cambridge college that had maps made relatively early was Queen's. And here is an example of a map they had made in the 1770s by a surveyor called Joseph Freeman. My current research involves studying the lives of local land surveyors who practiced in Great Britain and Ireland between 1530 and 1850, and I've developed an especial interest in Joseph. He came to Cambridge as a coach painter in 1764, and then worked for several Cambridge colleges as a map maker. Sadly, he didn't work for Emma. We weren't a, commission, a college that commissioned many maps, but he did work for us in another capacity, because he was also a portrait painter, or at least a copyist, and copied a set of portraits for us to hang in the parlour. Most of the portraits now hanging in the gardener room are his copies, and it's best to hang them apart from the originals to avoid direct comparison. But one of his copies of a college benefactor, George Thorpe, hangs in my office, looking benevolently down on me and my visitors. <laughs>